Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 65 of the Listening Time Podcast. I want to give a shout out to all of my Listening Time members, super members, and family members. Thank you all for supporting me and helping me do what I do. Remember that if you need my help to improve your listening and pronunciation and you want to be able to understand native speakers when they speak fast, then make sure to join my membership so you can get my specialized training to help you understand English better. And remember that I'm now releasing two new advanced podcast episodes each month on the fifth day and the 20th day of each month for my Listening Time family members. So now you're not only getting one new episode per month, you're getting two new advanced episodes every month. And this should really help you reach an advanced level of listening. So if you want my advanced podcast, then make sure to sign up to become a Listening Time family member today. The link is in the episode description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash listening time. A lot of people have asked me recently about how they can reach a more advanced level of listening and a more advanced level of English overall. And my advice is that you need to challenge yourself and listen to native content to listen to real English. And so it's hard to start this. I know that it's not easy to start listening to fast English. But that's why I've created my advanced podcast to help you make that transition because I speak at normal speed in that podcast, but I provide the transcript for you so you can see everything that I'm saying and it will help you understand. So make sure to sign up today if you want that. And in terms of the normal listening time podcast, I wanted to mention that I'm going to go back to posting just one episode every two weeks. Uh, I'm going to slow down a little bit because I need more time uh, to focus on my advanced podcast and other things that I'm working on. So I'm not going to be posting every week right now. I'm going to be posting every every two weeks. So like I said, I'm going to slow down a little bit. Um, but if you want more episodes, if you need more than just two episodes per month, then you can become a Listening Time member and you'll get a bonus episode every month. And so if you need more episodes, if you need more practice, then you can just sign up for $2 a month to become a Listening Time member, and you'll get an extra episode. All right, so today we're going to talk about outdoor activities. So we'll go through a few different types of outdoor activities and talk about each one. Remember that you have the transcript available for this episode in the episode description below this episode. So click on that if you need it. And please give this podcast a five-star rating if you like it, and share this podcast with anyone else who might find it useful. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about outdoor activities. The first one that I want to talk about is swimming. I know that swimming is technically indoor and outdoor because some pools are indoors and some pools are outdoors, but I tend to think of this exercise, this activity as an outdoor activity. So this activity has been in my mind a lot lately because now my son, who's only one year old, is doing swimming classes with my wife. So, of course, my son isn't swimming on his own, right? He's uh, in my wife's arms, but he's in the pool. By the way, I just want to highlight that phrase, on his own. In English, we can say by himself, or we can say on his own. But we can't say 
by his own. I hear a lot of my students say that phrase. So in this case, either by himself or on his own. So he's not swimming on his own, but he's with my wife and he's getting used to the water. He's getting accustomed to being uh, in water, uh, going underwater, and uh, holding his breath for a couple seconds, uh, all of that stuff. In English, when we say that you hold your breath, this just means that you don't breathe. So if you go underwater, you have to hold your breath, okay? So he's doing some swimming lessons, uh, and I went on Monday to watch him in his swimming class, and it was really fun. It was great to see him so stimulated and excited because he really likes the water. He loves taking baths, and uh, it's a really fun activity for him. So uh, this activity has been on my mind a lot lately, but me personally, I'm not a big swimmer. Uh, I grew up with swimming pools. Uh, my parents had a swimming pool uh, when I lived in my first house, and then we also had a swimming pool in my second house. But to be honest, I didn't really take advantage of this swimming pool that much. In English, when we say that you take advantage of something that you have, it means that you really use that thing and you get the most out of that thing. So I had swimming pools when I was younger, but I didn't really get the most out of them. I didn't use them as much as I should have. And so I usually went swimming when my friends came over. By the way, in English, when we say that someone comes over, this means that they come to your house. So we don't need to say, he came to my house. We can just say, he came over. So when my friends came over, this is when I would go in the pool because my friends wanted to go in uh, because usually they didn't have a swimming pool. So they like to come over to go swimming. So I didn't appreciate it that much. But of course, I swam a little bit and it was good exercise for me, but I'm not a strong swimmer. I'm not the type of guy who can swim long distances nonstop. I can't do that. And I can't tread water really well either. In English, the phrase tread water refers to when you can uh, move your arms and legs to float uh, in water. So this is treading water. For example, my dad can tread water for a really long time. He can move his arms and legs and stay afloat for, I don't know how long, but a long time. Uh, for me, this is really hard. So as you can see, uh, I'm not a natural swimmer. This is not my natural uh, environment, and so uh, I've never been that interested in this exercise, in this activity, but it's great exercise for your body. It's relaxing, and it's good for your joints, right? It's easier on your body. The word joints in English refers to your elbows, your knees, your shoulders, these parts of your body where you bend things. So being in the pool and uh, exercising in the pool is good for your joints. It's good for your body in general. Uh, so now let's talk about another outdoor activity, which is biking. So uh, we can use the word biking in English, or you can say riding bikes, you can say cycling, you can use all three of these terms. So uh, biking is a very popular sport nowadays, and it's not only a sport, really. Some people ride bikes uh, simply as a mode of transportation, right? Uh, there are a lot of people that take their bike to work or to school, for different reasons. It could be because they want to exercise. It could be because they don't have a car. It could be because 
they don't want to take public transportation, or maybe it's just a nice day outside and they want to enjoy the outdoors. So a lot of people ride their bikes just as a mode of transportation. But of course, there are also a lot of people that view biking as a sport for them. And there's a whole culture around biking in the U.S. and in other countries. It's interesting because you can see some cafes that are specifically for bikers. I don't know if you have these in your country where you live, but I can think of a few different cafes in my old city in the U.S. and here in Mexico, too, that are cafes uh, specifically for people who ride bikes. So it's like a combination of a bike shop and a cafe, and you see all these bikes outside because the people who are inside at these cafes rode their bikes there. So it's pretty interesting because there's a whole culture around biking. There are a lot of cafes and shops, and uh, it's a big sport, of course. And this is something that a lot of people learn to do when they're a kid. I remember that I learned to ride a bike when I was about six years old or so. Uh, in English, when we add the phrase or so after something, we're saying uh, around this amount or about this amount. So if I say six years old or so, I'm saying I was around six years old. I don't know if that was the exact age, but it was uh, sometime around then. So I remember that I learned to ride a bike when I was six years old or so, and I learned mostly on my own. Uh, I didn't rely on my parents to teach me. I learned uh, through trial and error. In English, trial and error refers to when you try something and then you mess up and then you try it again and mess up and then at some point you actually get it. You actually succeed. This is trial and error. So I remember falling down a lot. I remember crashing into trees. I remember injuring myself. So there was a lot of trial and error involved in learning to ride a bike. But of course, eventually I learned it and I was able to start riding on my own. And of course, uh, I don't think I'll ever forget how to ride a bike, even if I don't do so in 20 years or however long. I think I'll always know how to ride a bike. And it's a really fun activity. I think most people like riding bikes. For me, even though I don't ride bikes often, every time I do ride a bike, I really enjoy myself and it's relaxing for me and it's a way for me to enjoy the outdoors. So I really like this. And so uh, it's great exercise for your legs, especially. So if you see professional bikers, they have really strong legs. So this is a great way to really work out your lower body. Um, by the way, in English, we like to divide our body parts into upper body and lower body. So for example, you could say that uh, I worked out my lower body at the gym today. And this just refers to the lower part of your body, um, your lower muscles. So biking is a great lower body exercise. All right, now let's talk about hiking. So this is my favorite outdoor activity. Uh, well, actually walking in general is my favorite outdoor activity, but hiking is like a form of walking. So I love walking, I love hiking. So hiking is my favorite outdoor activity uh, because it's a great way to just connect with nature and you can really enjoy your surroundings and it can be pretty relaxing. It doesn't always need to be a strenuous exercise. It could just be a nice leisurely walk, for example. 
In English, the word strenuous means that something requires a lot of effort. It's something that you have to try hard to do and make a lot of effort to do. This is something that's strenuous. So, hiking doesn't need to be strenuous, it can be leisurely. Leisurely refers to something that is、uh, easy and peaceful and it's、uh, relaxing. So,、uh, hiking can be leisurely and you can just walk outside in nature and enjoy the outdoors. So, that's why I really like it. I've done a lot of different hikes in San Diego, which is where I'm from. So I've hiked in the desert, in the woods,、uh, on the cliffs, by the coast. So I've hiked in a lot of different types of environments there. And there are a lot of great options for hikes in Southern California in general. But unfortunately, here where I live in Mexico, There isn't a lot of hiking. There aren't a lot of places where you can do this. So, this is one of the disadvantages for me、uh, living here in Mexico i s I don't enjoy the outdoors in the same way.、Uh, but hopefully, in the future, I'll seek out some different hiking spots and try to enjoy nature a little bit more.、Uh, in English, you can say that you seek something out. This just means that you look for something, you search for something. Okay? So, hopefully, I'll be able to seek out and find some cool nature spots in the future when I have a little more time to dedicate to that because I really miss this.、Uh, and lastly, let's talk about running. This is another outdoor activity that's really popular, one of the most popular ones. So, I've had some experience with running, but I have to say that I'm a very bad runner. So, unfortunately, I'm not a good runner. It's always been hard for me to do、uh, sports that require a lot of cardio, that require a lot of endurance. This is not easy for me.、Uh, and so,、uh, I've run a good amount in the past. I've tried to get better at running, and I go through periods where I start running a little bit、uh, every week, maybe a few times a week, but I never really commit to it and really train to get better at running. So maybe someday I will, but I think that I'm just not a natural at it. It's hard for me. And so, I like running a little bit if I'm outdoors and it's good weather. I like this experience, but I don't think I could ever really train seriously to get good at running because it's just hard for me. So, there was one period of time when I was living in the state of Oregon, which is above the state of California.、Um, I lived there for a couple years. And I was surrounded by really beautiful nature. And during that time, I decided to try to get a little bit better at running, and I wanted to do this exercise more. And that was the time when I actually improved a little bit, and I was able to run longer distances. But that's because the nature around me was so nice,、uh, the environment was. Perfect for runners,、uh, and there were trails specifically for running in nature, and it was a really great experience, and I loved that. But after that,、uh, when I lived in other places,、uh, I stopped doing this, and I didn't have the same outdoor trails to run on、uh, that I did during that time in Oregon, so I kind of Uh, lost the habit after that. So that was the one time when I got a little bit better and I started to like it a little bit more. But it didn't last too long because I eventually moved away and then I didn't do it that much afterwards. So nowadays, if I run,、uh, I have to deal with traffic because I'm running. 
on the sidewalk, in the streets, outside, and uh, there are cars, and it's not the most comfortable activity, but I still do it sometimes uh, because I want to get out and move and exercise. And I think that a lot of people find that what helps them run better is if they listen to music while they're running. And I've also noticed this. Uh, so, of course, if I listen to music, I can run for longer and maybe I can run faster. But nowadays, if I run, I usually listen to podcasts in French so I can uh, multitask and combine my French study with my exercise. So I think that this is also a great time when you can listen to English. Maybe you already do. Maybe you're listening to this podcast right now while you're running. I don't know. But it's a great time to combine these two activities and uh, exercise your mind while you're exercising your body. So I think that that's a great way to um, incorporate more language learning into your day as well. So uh, why don't we stop there for today? Uh, I hope this episode was interesting for you. I hope it was good practice for your listening skills. Remember that I'm going to start posting episodes every two weeks uh, from now on, not every week. Uh, but if you want more episodes and more practice, then make sure to sign up to become a Listening Time member so you can get my bonus episodes. And of course, you'll also get my specialized training. And if you want my advanced episodes, if you want two new advanced episodes each month, where I speak fast at normal speed, then make sure to become a Listening Time family member. So click on the link in the episode description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash listening time to sign up today to receive two advanced podcast episodes every month. And remember that you have the transcript for this episode in the episode description below this episode, so click on that if you need it. And please remember to give this podcast a five-star rating if you haven't already, and please share it with anyone else who might find it useful and help this podcast grow. All right, well, thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time. Listening Time.